from showing off his dangerous sparring abilities to teaming up with the greatest champions to train for the big fight, Alex Pereira is sure to bring his A game against Israel Adesanya at UFC 287. This is a riveting battle of rivals. Now, Alex is as cocky as a fighter can be, and it isn't fueled by ego, but by the history between the two athletes. Potan was crowned as the UFC middleweight champion last year. How? By dismissing his long-term rival Israel with a last gasp knockout. Both are facing each other once more on the 9th of April in Miami. Alex has been hard at work training to defend his title and to humiliate his opponent again. His maiden defense is going to be spectacular for sure, since this time he's the favorite too. He posted one of his sparring sessions on Twitter with boxing star Zhang, who is set to face Joe Joyce next month. Israel had a strong title run before Alex, and with those solid and defined back muscles, it doesn't look like Israel has a chance back at the title. Potan commented that he fought for four rounds with Zhang, and he feels good. It was said to be a hard and dangerous sparring, since no doubt the match will be even harder. Bear that in mind that the Chinese challenger is several divisions above him, and the pictures show that the Brazilian is capable of fighting at higher weights if he wanted to make a switch. Honestly, Alex keeps getting better and stronger, while Israel has been scarred mentally by his previous losses. Here's the thing. When both fighters were kickboxers, Alex defeated Israel twice. Then they met twice in Glory of Heroes. If you haven't heard of it, it's a Chinese kickboxing promotion. In 2016, their first bout in it, Potan won with a decision victory. But it was a pretty close bout. The second time in 2017, Pereira knocked his rival out. That left hook in the third round was pretty sexy. It was this moment that catapulted them to their first MMA clash at UFC 281. But um, he's durable and he recovers well. So even in the fifth round, I knew he was going to come strong because he was down. Same thing as last time again. And yeah, I mean, it's another great story for him, but it's not over. This is still war. And even then, Alex won the middleweight bout with a fifth round TKA. It's important to note that he is the only man to have ever knocked out Israel in his entire fighting career. I mean, the guy has like 21 knockouts in his kickboxing career, but the bane of his existence is Potan, who holds an overall MMA record of seven and one. With this in mind, it isn't hard to believe that the Brazilian fighter is confident in his abilities for the upcoming bout. The MMA pioneer John McCarthy thinks that the last style bender is probably plagued mentally. So when he looks to avenge his loss, his loss and especially the knockouts get in the way. McCarthy pointed out on the Weighing In podcast that losing repeatedly is always going to be at the back of his mind. This would be their first rematch in UFC, so if you ask me, it could still go either way. But I wouldn't be surprised if Alex puts him out once more for the bigger crowd. It wasn't until his coach told him, of anyone else on this planet, who would you trust? Because these boys are still going to fight. Would you trust them to, 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 to be guided by anyone else on this planet? That's what switched the mind switch in him. And he's like, I have, to, I have to keep doing this. I can't let them go into battle alone. The middleweight king even teased the popular rapper Drake ahead of the rematch. Drake is known for his music and for placing huge bets on fights. He's already supported Israel once before to beat Jared Cannonier. It's hard to know who he'll place his bet on for this match. But to help make the decision easier, Alex rose to the stand. He posted on Instagram, tagging the rapper to say, I hope this time you bet on the right person. Yikes, the shots were definitely fired here. Last time, Drake placed a cool million dollars on the Nigerian shoulders to get his vengeance in their maiden UFC bout, but that didn't age well. Honestly, I didn't expect the New Zealand artist to accept the shot at the rematch so quickly. Fans have previously called his past fights boring, despite the fact that he won in them. So losing to his arch nemesis is the most exciting thing to have happened in a while. The last style bender is hell bent on making the fight as bloody as possible. Personal way, so I understand and I empathize when you don't want to get up and all that stuff and you lose motivation, so... Yeah, I'm glad he's pulled himself out of it. I'm glad he's feeling much better. He's a better man, better fighter, better all that, so... Despite the history, he said he who has the last laugh laughs best. So Drake has a lot to think about this time around, especially since Alex is a young fighter in MMA and still managed to defeat a seasoned champion. He's made it clear that Izzy just can't beat him. When the Brazilian spoke last year before UFC 281, he was pretty chill. And for good reason, may I add. He said that their first UFC fight would be no different from their previous ones. At the time, he made it clear that enough time hadn't 
passed for his opponent to change his ways. Alex thought that Israel is on an autopilot mode, and if he tried anything different in their fight, it still wouldn't be good for him. That aged well since he walked out victorious. In a more recent interview, he straight up just asked what the Nigerian is going to do. He can't change his strength in such a short span. Unless he has a surprise for us, the outcome is pretty clear from right where I am. Alex advised that next time, his rival should use more force in the clinch. He further questioned what Israel wants to do now that he couldn't in the first match. He better respect me. I just want him to, just after my last fight, you know, I wouldn't say who, but certain people thought I won that fight. Certain people, you know, in my camp thought I won that fight, but I was just like, nah, it was close, but I'll take the L from that one. Just a gentle reminder that Israel has a lot riding on this fight. And let's just say another loss would be devastating for him and the fans. To the point of being forced to either retire or move on to a different weight class. Because a fifth bout between the same two people with similar results is boring. And frankly, kind of ridiculous. It'd be better if the former champ moved on, since he's not short of potential and talent. Because while he hits his head trying to get a win, Alex is busy training with legends. The reasons why many are leaning towards Alex, despite him being new to MMA, is that he's aiming to work harder. He's using all the help he can get. It appears that he's enlisted the help of legendary light heavyweight Chuck Liddell to gain an edge, and he also has former light heavyweight champion Glover Teixeira helping him out. His outside help is almost in the form of a trailblazing UFC Hall of Famer. Both of these legends have been actively advising and assisting Alex with the rematch. Liddell can be credited for bringing MMA into mainstream sports. He has a pretty solid resume that would knock you out of the park. And of course, he can physically do that to you too. Alex shared moments of the exchanges between them on his Instagram, asking fans how much they'd pay for a class with the superstar. Everywhere you turn, people are unable to deny the power Alex holds over Israel. John Jones has openly said that Alex is going to win. In fact, he's rooting for him. Some fighters just have a certain hold over others. Henry Cejudo, another former UFC champ, said that Israel can only win if he makes major changes to his fight and to his camp. Otherwise, the same guy who always wins will retain his title. He admitted that while he's cheering for the Kiwi fighter, he thinks the Brazilian will win. Alex seems to be the new guy everyone must fear because just a few fights in, he already holds a title, defeating a guy who held more titles than he did fights. Being the new destructive force, he gained the respect of the undefeated boxing sensation Ryan Garcia. He said that Alex throws a hook just like he does, and he's never seen someone do that. He thinks the champ is scary and wouldn't want to be around this man. Garcia called him a destroyer, a terminator, and weird in one breath. And I agree, he's not a force to be reckoned with, at least not five times. That's all I have to say about how Alex Pereira really feels about fighting Israel Adesanya.